Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Bilal Aslam. I am the International Program Coordinator for Islamic Relief USA. And I actually look after the Myanmar projects for our organization. And I wanted to share some updates regarding the situation. As we all know, uh, there's been a lot of reports and a lot of coverage recently about the conflict, the violence that's been taking place in the northern Rakhine state in Myanmar and the, the massive uh, displacement that's been happening across the border and, and the reports that have been coming out have been very troubling about the, uh, the grotesque violence and the severe, the severe uh, uh, situations that people are, are living in right now. So you may not have uh, heard much from us and maybe wondering what, what it is that we're doing. So uh, the purpose of this is to, to really let you know that we are working as hard as we can to find a way to access these communities and to provide aid and support. Um, for all organizations at this time, it's very, very difficult to work in this area. UN agencies are restricted. Uh, many other NGOs are restricted by the government from, from being able to go to this part of the country and to support the communities that are displaced, uh, that are affected, that are fleeing uh, violence. <clears throat> um, but I, it's important for us to, to remind you that Islamic Relief has actually been supporting uh, the Muslims in Myanmar who have been displaced uh, and, and, and facing violence since the beginning of the conflict in 2012. So for almost five years, we've been uh, working both in Bangladesh initially and also inside Myanmar. Uh, working with the communities to provide emergency health support, uh, food aid, and also sheltering support. And this is something that we will continue to do and continue to support with um, as the communities that are currently affected begin to become accessible. We will, uh, inshallah, find a way to reach them, to support them, and to continue to provide aid uh, in accordance to our normal procedure. There are many that are currently in Bangladesh, something like half a million or so uh, have crossed in the past few weeks, which is a staggering number. And uh, the conditions that they're living in are also very, very poor. However, the government of Bangladesh is also restricting access to these refugees. Uh, we're, we're hoping, we're trying our best to, to find a way to, to deliver aid and to support those communities that have survived the violence, that have fled. However, at this time, um, we're still not being given access. Hopefully, uh, soon something can, can open up for us, and whenever that, that chance arises, we will be putting together a response. And also inside of uh, Myanmar, in the northern Rakhine state, our teams on the ground uh, are, are trying as best as they can to gain access. So access is the main issue and the main uh, buzzword that we're hearing a lot. Uh, there's a lot of restriction, not just for NGOs, but also for the Muslims in the country. Um, they're facing a lot of restrictions in movement and in, in, in access even to basic life, uh, life services. Um, this is an ongoing need that they've had and an ongoing struggle that they've been facing. I was actually able to, to visit Myanmar two years ago in 2015 and visited some of the camps where Islamic Relief is working, uh, some of the internment camps where people are, are locked away, essentially, and not able to leave. They're, they're shut out from society and rely solely upon the government or upon other NGOs. Uh, government organizations, non-government organizations, uh, organizations like Islamic Relief, uh, to provide them with basic basic services, food, water, education, health care, and, and they're struggling. So this is a situation that we've been following f since 2012 <coughs> for, for the duration of the conflict, and it's something that we, we intend to continue to work work for and, and to support as best as we can. Um, we've seen the reports just like you and we know how, how serious this is and how, how tragic uh, the situation is and we, we appreciate and we encourage uh, all of our supporters to continue to 
to pray for those who are affected and to continue to raise your voices to speak out and to advocate uh, for those who are are unfortunate in the situation to have their rights restored. Um, this is a situation where we can provide the, the short-term temporary band-aids, uh, but really governments have to to provide solutions uh, for these people. The people that are displaced need a place to go. And those that are still living in the country need to have basic human rights. They need to have stability in their lives. They need to have peace, justice, um, access to 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 healthcare, to food, to water, to, to means of livelihood, um, to have security in their homes and in their communities. So these are things that that can come through advocacy, through communities putting pressure on the governments to to restore these rights, uh, and that comes from from all of you uh, speaking up and for f and 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 really putting pressure uh, on your representatives and also on on international community to to take this issue more seriously. Um, so as this continues. Uh, the situation continues to develop, we will update you and hopefully within a short period of time we'll be able to to gain this access and to do the work that we need to do. Um, even if you don't see things coming uh, on our social media or news updates, please trust that we are working diligently uh, behind the scenes to continue to support those who are the most vulnerable and needy around the world. Uh, inshallah, in the next in the next few days, I hope that we'll be able to to share some good news with you. Um, but please continue to pray for those in need, and uh, continue to support us, so that we can also do our work um, in assisting those around the world. Inshallah, Sakhla khair.